we had another live last year, 2019, and now 2020. Um, and each time there's just always been, yeah, a lot to share, right? Um, yeah, as an introduction, hi everyone. I am Pimelo Mareri. I'm a sacred leadership coach and I am a student within the Waria Mystery School. I'm based in Botswana and yeah, I've, I've been doing this work for <laughs> 19 months now, I think. <laughs> so Joy and I started working together about 19 months ago um, in, in her Rise the Waria container. And then we work together again in the Activate the Warrior container. And yeah, when she launched the mystery school, I mean, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't miss anything that Joy has created and that she is offering. So I just really had to join. Um, yeah, I'm a healer. And my current body of work is on sex, sexuality, and pleasure for leaders, for men and women leaders who are yeah seeking to to release and to heal the socially and culturally conditioned shame guilt and embarrassment that they might hold around sex sexuality pleasure and their bodies so yeah <laughs> that's it for now i think we'll, we'll dive into much greater detail as the conversation moves along yeah oh, i love that we definitely have worked together i think you're what you are my oldest student <laughs> you're my oldest student oh, wow. because you always say i cannot miss this offering joy which which has been really good because i i believe and know that um i can see the transformation of this work through the transformation i've been noticing in your own journey because we've been doing this work for almost two years now uh so it's been really beautiful to see the transformation from the moment you started working when you in with rise the world you were coming in to just heal yourself you know and connect with your <laughs> yeah. your guides your spiritual guides and and then we worked on activate the world of you know, which was about your goals of what your mission here and then now we're here doing uh one registry school so maybe you can share how you have been finding Are we good? Ooh. Yes, we are good. The, the, okay, yeah. The, the, yeah, the speaker had a problem. Yes. So yeah, maybe you can share on like from the moment we started working, the transformation we've been observing uh, through all the three containers and the current one, which you're part of, which is the Warrior Mystery School. Yeah. And oh, wow. if you want to please comment, feel free to comment and ask questions so that we can refer to them in our conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, like this is one of my favorite conversations ever, like to talk about what you and I have been up to, right? So um, you mentioned earlier that when I joined Rise the Warrior, uh, the Rise of the Warrior container, I was just coming for my own healing, you know? And at the time, guys, I didn't even know what I needed to heal, right? Um, I remember, Joy, when we did the, our live in 2018 for your Joy Mahami show, right? Then right at the end, so Joy asked me, so when are you coming to do your ancestral healing? And well, today she says she doesn't remember asking me that. So it was probably, you know, her guides and my guides doing their thing, right? And just before then, I had been very curious about ancestors and just what that means, you know? And so we dived into Rise Doria, did that for three months, and I think already a year, I mean, a month in already, we were already collapsing a lot of the ways in which I was living my life at the time, you know? And so we were doing like, like massive alignment work, just aligning all of my life and all of my work 
with my sole mission, right? And it was incredible work. At the initial, very painful, you know, like in one session, um, the guidance was that I should go collapse how I was running my NGO at the time. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that was painful to hear, but the results have been so beautiful, you know, like, yeah, I couldn't live my life any way other than how I'm living it now and how I'm doing my work now, right? So, yeah, like the journey begin then, beginning of 2019. So it's been yeah, about 18, 19 months now. And I'm currently running my coaching business, which, which was born just at the end of, of my work with Joy in Rise the Warrior. Um, yeah. So <laughs> shall I share more about the Warrior container? Yes, yes, of course. Okay. Yeah, so like even coming to this conversation, I kept thinking, you know, Joy, Joy, you and I can have a conversation about the mystery school without talking about the journey from 2019, you know? Um, and so at the end of Rise the Warrior, when Joy and I concluded our work, I then, that's when I designed like my first offering for my coaching business, yeah? And <laughs> it's so interesting because <laughs> I thought, you know, I was like, hey, I'm doing this with the guidance of spirit. So, yeah, spirit will probably just come through and do the things for me. All right. And I think for about six months, I wasn't making any money through my business. Right. <laughs> and I was so frustrated. <laughs> Like, I keep wanting to knock myself in the head. I'm like, but even if it's, like, a conscious business, like, you still have to, like, get out there and do, like, the external work, like, the outside world work, like, to get clients in, you know? Um, so then that's when the Activate the Warrior container happened, right? And that was a mastermind now where we were about, we were five in the container, right? with three other women and joy and oh my god guys like where do i even start with telling somebody what we do in these containers <laughs> um so with warrior with warrior pinyo and you, like earlier when i shared on my personal timeline about this conversation i said it's going to be mind-blowing more than you could ever anticipate you know and this is what I've always experienced in these containers because I could never predict or anticipate what we're going to do, right? And so with Activate the Warrior my thinking was like, oh my God, we're going to be we're like, we're going to be drawing strategy and I don't know, drawing budgets or whatever. I was never ready for the inner work that then happened, you know? And just the, it's like the, like the opening of what happens beyond like this physical realm, you know? So within the Warrior container, I got to understand what it really means to be a healer or a light worker, right? So when we concluded Rise the Warrior, um, yeah, there was a time where Joy and I are walking and she tells me, you know, you're a healer, right? <laughs> and I just couldn't deal, right? And so in Activate the Warrior Premier, that's where I then got to understand little bit. I think I've, 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 understand, I've understood it the most from the mystery school, you know, because I guess because of my mathematics background, like I want to understand things step by step, right? So when you tell me I'm a healer, like, I, I need I need for you like to break it down for me to show me oh okay why am I a healer what does it mean exactly you know so the understanding for me started in the activate the warrior container where we did like those different types of light workers join um, and then when we got into the mystery school like just looking at the history of the earth. Um, now just diving into the ascension process and the ascension work 
which is such juicy, juicy things, guys. Like, um, like in my earlier years of life here on earth, like I, I used to feel so lost. Like, like it's a kind of feeling lost where you, you can't put a finger on it. Like you feel lost and alone. But you can't even articulate those words that, oh my God, I feel lost and alone. But like, that's how I felt for most of my like teenage and early adult years, right? Because I didn't understand, like, yeah, I was this person who was having these thoughts by herself and not knowing that there were other people out there who were questioning, so where does the earth come from? Why do I feel so greatly affected when a negative event happens in the world, you know? And so just being part of the mystery school and getting to understand exactly, like, almost like technically, guys, like, yeah, she, she's broken it down for us. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, like I've never had such greater understanding about who I am as a human being and how I have come to be here on earth at this point. Oh God. I, yeah, like, Joy, I, I, I sort of like, like struggle to, to ex I've been wondering, how do I explain this to somebody who's not in the container, right? <laughs> because, yeah, like, you gotta be in there, Sam. Yeah. Yeah, I, it, it is difficult, uh, even like, I think for me as well, I struggle to explain what the container, all the containers that I do. And I think I've told you and other warriors that I work with in these containers, I am just mind blown as everyone because most of the time I am channeling all this, it's coming through me and I'm like, oh my God, what is this? It's a very beautiful, <laughs> beautiful ex ex experience as well because I literally, I see the, the transformation of myself within these containers and I'm like, wow, that, that was another level. Yeah. And, you know, today I was, I was given a gift this morning of seeing um, a light worker who is at the very beginning of that awakening and that coming into the realization that um, they are a light worker and that uh, there is actually explanations uh, that are available to explain what is happening to them, the, especially the inner experiences, how they feel about themselves. And I have forgotten what that's like because I haven't had new people coming through. And so today I, was, <laughs> I went to the, <laughs> class 101, you know, uh, with this client and I was like, wow. Um, they are, I love that you said, there are many people who feel different, who feel um, that they are here for something, something else that they can't seem to reach. Uh, this mm -hmm. client in the channeling session, the last question, the first question she asked is, what is my purpose? And I'm like, that's a wow. big question, but I know <laughs> it's, a, it's a question that a lot of light workers, people who are drawn to wanting to to bring light into mm. the world, if they fixate on this, on like, what is my purpose? I need to know my purpose. And I think that me and you, we've worked very deeply on understanding what your purpose is. And right mm. now you have a, a current body of work that you're doing, which is different from what you're doing, 2018, 2019, and 2020, <laughs> right? It's been transforming, yet at yeah. the same time, it literally seems I've been telling you but that's your way. I, 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 <laughs> may, may we mm. talk about, about your, your journey, wow. your purpose, and how it's been really forming in this beautiful way within the warrior mystery <laughs> container. <laughs> oh, God. I kept wondering whether one hour is enough for us. No? <laughs> but we'll make it work. <laughs> right. Um. So I, I, I think um, a, a lot of people who, who might know me, right, and who might have known me for quite a while, um, would have watched the journey from when I started, like, running my NPO, doing, like, leadership development programs, right? And those leadership development programs had in there also components of entrepreneurship development and career development, right? And... 
so like what what I've seen like with my journey, like it's, it's been almost like a pruning process, right? Because when I started working with you, then the invitation was to almost like let go of the career development and entrepreneurship and just do leadership work, right? And I ran with that for a while. And the deeper, we, like it's such a beautiful pruning and crystallization process, right? Because the work of sex, sexuality, and pleasure, it was always in there. Um, when I designed my first offering last year, August, it was like, I think it was just two sessions. <laughs> I, had, I had allowed this body of work just two sessions within a 12-session um, program. And so the more we went deeper, and Joel, like you've been telling me this, like, like to me, your work is with the leader. And you would also tell me that it's not by accident that you've been a leader from the age of 11 years old. I mean, I took it for granted. I'm like, no, but everybody else has been a leader since primary school. <laughs> but right now I'm 32. And so I've been like in various leadership roles from, yeah, from the age of 11. So for like 21 years now, right? And so like, that's just like the earthly version of it, that in this lifetime on earth, Melo Mareri has been in leadership for like 11 years and also like getting to understand why, why I've been a leader since 11, since 11 years old, uh, because it was part of my initiation, right? And I only got to understand this when you and I Joy did the work, right? Like that it wasn't by coincidence that I just happened to always find myself in leadership positions, right? that the Mandela Rhodes experience, it wasn't a coincidence that the Zanilem Beki Fellowship where I did like feminist work, where I was introduced to feminist work, that wasn't by accident, right? So it's like you always say, like our purpose is always in front of us actually, but because the socialization, like our socialization makes us believe that like our dreams should be so grand, such that they're inaccessible. We always think that our purpose is everything else other than where we are already like planted, you know? So what's been mind blowing has been just seeing that everything was, 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 was preparation for this work, right? Like even the moments that broke my heart and that made me sad, that was preparation. Like these 21 years of being a leader, they were preparing me to now hold space for the leader who is navigating their own journey, right? So like, I think the biggest aha moment for me with the purpose work, soul purpose work, is just getting to see that it's always been there. It's always been here with me and everything that I've taken part in, like all like these leadership development programs, it was preparation. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, like that's been the most beautiful thing. And another thing about purpose joy, you know, I get like also because of our social socialization, we're taught to be everything else but ourselves, right? And so when the guidance came and you kept saying, no, like do your highest excitement, do the thing that excites you most. And I remember this one time when like you were doing five days of manifesting with the divine. And I wrote that my highest excitement is reading, it's writing, it's teaching women on sex, right? And girl, I think it took me like a month or two months before I actually said yes to doing this body of work. Like I go back to that, to that stream that you did and I'm like, but to me, it was right there on your face, right? But because of our socialization and conditioning here, Sure, it will be sitting there, right there on your face. But you won't, you, because my argument was like, no, but I'm supposed to teach people on leadership. <laughs> but it was right there. So like, that's been one of my biggest aha moments. Like just doing the thing that excites me and also allowing it to be easy. You know, like, which is counter our socialization, you know, right? Like we refuse for it to be easy because the, the, like the doctrine has been that 
it, it can only be a struggle. It should be, a, girl, you should work hard. Like when you're slaying, it should be, not that we don't work hard, right? But it gets to flow and it gets to be easy. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing journey. Yeah. Mm. It is, it is it's, it's a beautiful journey. And I think that, um, um, just referencing to the, the session I had today with, with the client, she's like, you know, Joy, if this session was a confirmation for me for all the things I already knew about myself. So it was more of that clarity. And I think I have seen with you, which has been an interesting thing for me, um, how for me as, as someone who's outside your experience, I see it so clearly. I saw it from the very beginning that your body of work is around <laughs> this. And it took you many instances, and even as we're speaking, I'm remembering <laughs> that uh, at the rise, the warrior retreat, this also came up, you know? But it took you eight mm. months or so for it to finally land, you know? And it's yeah. why I'm really obsessed with teaching people about purpose and why the mystery school at the core is to help you as a life worker to step into what I call your multidimensional mission and purpose. And I think that for many people, sometimes it's very difficult to believe in uh, the idea that you are a healer or you are a seer, a dreamer, and how to actually utilize these gifts in this modern world that we live in, in ways that do not ask you to let go of who you are, to let go of mm -hmm. also just your life, the way that it is, you know? And myself, yeah. like for me, when I, I stepped into this world, it, those were some of my anxieties, the idea that I would be consumed by it and I would lose my, my personality, who I am and my desires. And I just mm. made it a mission that this has to make sense to me. I, was still, I still have to be joy and expand, obviously, on who I think I am. And that has been a beautiful journey that has unfolded. Um, but the idea of understanding why you are the way that you are, why you are this particular different child who feels differently, who has these deep desires to do work in a different way and how you can utilize mm -hmm. that into uh, creating your life from that perspective. It's one of the reasons why I created Women in School. And also what you were talking about in the beginning, which is to understand this in a um, literal way, in a scientific way, you know, because a lot of the women actually who come into the container are very mental and they're like, we need to understand, but why? Why <laughs> must I do it that way? Why? Down, what does honey. it mean? <laughs> Please explain <laughs> this. Uh, yeah, I, wow. um, I, so many times when we have a uh, Competition and answers. Um, it's where you guys will bring questions to you like, Joy, but can you explain this? What about this? Can you go back and I don't even understand that? It's just mm. really difficult. And I think that one of the reasons why we have a lot of gifted people in the Black community not utilizing that gift is because yeah. we understand. And the mystery mm -hmm. thing that's understanding right so mm. speaking of understanding what are some of the understanding that you have personally learned from what i'm just i know that a lot but the one that <laughs> you're <laughs> now, uh, you understanding thank of, you for of saying the world. that <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you for saying that we know that there are a lot because i was already thinking oh gosh where do I even begin? <laughs> um, yeah, so you were saying like understandings related to like my understanding of the world. Yes, of the world, of, of your, who you are as a person, as a woman, as a black woman, and existing at this particular point in human history. Wow. <laughs> Okay, let's break it down. Just of the world. Let's just of the world. 
<laughs> I, I was really going like that probably yeah um so i would say like the one thing that that deeply intrigued me from the activate the water in your container was matters to do with the history of the earth you know like the history of the earth journey of the earth as a being as as a being that has a soul herself and just how we got to this point in in history right yeah that used to give me like like intense excitement vibes when we're in the activate the water premier and yeah as a person who has sex codes so i don't know if it has anything to do with my sex codes but i always get so aroused <laughs> when we were talking about this. <laughs> um, so what I've appreciated the most is just like getting to learn about, about, about our earth. Like it's more, than, it's more than just the history of the earth actually. It's like where the earth is coming from and why she is here right now in this point of history right now, you know? And what what we we conversed a lot about was even about COVID nineteen, you know, and what that means for for Earth's journey right now, and how I as the light worker then come into the equation in this entire process, you know. I think what what has what has made my journey as a leader as a healer so much lighter joy is just getting to understand the technicalities of it, you know? Getting to understand where I come from, for example. And getting to understand that there is these there are other forms of life on other planets, on other galaxies. Right? Um getting to understand why I was born as a girl in Botswana on the African continent in the year nineteen eighty eight like just getting to understand that and why I would be born as a healer at this point um, in history and how that fits just into everything. Like, oh guys, I, I've never had such understanding as I do right now about my own existence and how it feeds into everything, like just how it's linked to everything. Am I being vague, Joy? <laughs> no, uh, it, you're not being vague. Uh, I think uh, the work that we do is so complex that sometimes it's very difficult to explain it. But you are explaining it very perfectly because that is uh, like that has also been my journey. Like uh, for me, when I was 19 years old, I was initiated into understanding this bigger truth of why we're here, why I exist in the form that I exist, what is the purpose and um, the meaning of who I am, what I am, being a soul, um, a, a spiritual being who is existing actually. Here's a new update, by the way. We usually say I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. And what has been getting updated to my understanding now is actually you're a spiritual being in a spiritual matrix. It's actually not true. You really want to believe that we, like sometimes when we say the human, we think the human is separate from spirit, but yeah. the human, this body is a spiritual vessel. Mm. It's a hologram, you know? So I've been transitioning myself into say, actually, this is a spiritual matrix. I'm having a spiritual experience as a spiritual being. Right? And so for me, just like you, just like many light workers out there, if you're a light worker out there, Please tell, share with us if you're resonating with this. But growing up, always wondering about things about um, why things exist the way that they are. Why, mm. you know, you are here. What is the purpose? What is the point? And also just having this feeling like I kind of have been here before or I, have, I, I think mm. it's so much more than what my priest is saying <laughs> or what my teacher is saying. I feel like yeah. I'm missing something, you know? Feeling like there is some missing link, information you're not being given about why you exist. And so a lot mm. of mystery schools is definitely for people who enjoy 
wanting to understand things. It's like if you're one of those person who, you know, you struggle mm-hmm. when you don't understand something, you can't just believe in it. The mystery school is for you because it's definitely about, you know, um, just fitting out, answering out all those questions that you probably have had your whole life. And I do mm-hmm. know that a lot of people um, don't step into the role of the light worker because we don't know why I should, like why, yeah. what must I do, you know? And mm. to have a, a, a conviction in this path, the conviction that I will do this path to the best of my ability. Sometimes you need that uh, extra information to understand why. You mm. can't have a conviction on something if you don't understand why you are doing it, mm. you know? Um, so, I love that. <laughs> mm, I really, really love that because like that understanding, it's definitely part of what has made it easier for me to like fully, like it's not hundred percent yet. I can feel it, but to like to, to begin to fully arrive into, into the work that I know I'm here to do, you know? Like just getting to understand why, why am I a healer? And also getting to understand why this body of work on sex, sexuality and pleasure. Guys, like it is so deep, beautifully deep, right? And also like earlier when I was talking about the 21, 21 year journey as a leader, I did mention that that was just a part of the earthly journey, right? <laughs> There's the galactic journey as well. like. This is not the first time in my vest, in the vest existence of my soul that I've been a leader, you know? And you get to see these things while you're in the mystery school. Like, I was so shook, guys. The session where I got to see a version of myself on another galaxy being a leader, right? And it made sense. Like, I couldn't even find the words at the time. It made sense then why I would be a leader in this lifetime on this planet, right? And it also made sense why the work on sex, sexuality, and pleasure, which is so much more than just sex, sexuality, and pleasure, by the way. <laughs> Guys, yo, like, yeah, in my mother tongue, we say, like, yeah, I was never ready. Um, <laughs> there was another thing I wanted to share, Joy, that... So I, I've, I shared two posts on my personal timeline about this conversation, right? And yesterday I said, like, the mystery school is for, is for anybody who has ever sensed that they have a much bigger purpose than what they might be currently experiencing, you know? So if you're just sitting there and you feel like, no, man, there's more to my life than this. I know I was meant to, for something bigger. I don't know what it is you want to come to the mystery school, right? And I know a lot of us healers, we always say, oh my God, like I'm only finding out now. No, you've actually always had suspicions. Like, yeah, like I've been talking about healing since 2016, guys, like, yo, and I didn't even know. So you've always had like a, like an itch, like you've always had a suspicion. If if that is you, you want to come to the mystery school, And also, just so you are within community of people with whom you can absolutely be yourself, right? So I'm part of the first cohort of the mystery school. There are 12 12 of us. And with these 12 women, guys, myself included, I can be all of myself. And I've never experienced that anywhere in the world before. (laughs) I can't even begin to what that means yo anyway so yeah <laughs> you just oh and the the other thing about the mystery school guys i think joy mentioned this i don't know what yeah but joy, i think you meant you, you you said something along the lines of when you show up like you really show up right like you really deliver yeah one I feel like the mystery school should be like a staple food for every light worker out there, right? 
like you cannot exist as a light worker and not be part of the mystery school, right? Because sure, you're going to be reading your books, The Secret. I've read all of them, guys. Like, I've read tons of books, Conversations with God. But I still had so many questions that I didn't even know I had until I stepped into the mystery school, right? So, like, consider the mystery school as just a gift to yourself to be in community and to be constantly being nourished and being educated in who you truly are, right? Staple food for light workers. One, right? Two, um, I think I think this is this is Joy's least priced offering, right? $77 per month, right? But I can assure you, the value is more than $77, right? So it's a staple food for life. Every light worker needs to have this. Like as a light worker, you need to have a space where you're being taught by this amazing woman every week. And she is doing massive work, like tons of healing work on you. Guys, like, yo, we were never ready. Like what she gives us per month is probably worth like $1,000 per month. It could be $1,000 per month, but you're going to be paying $77. Like the type of healing you're going to do with this girl, <laughs> yo, guys. No, it got, actually, I know it was after one of our sessions where I think we were clearing the sacral chakra and she does like this quantum healing stuff, you know, where you heal like, seven generations of your ancestors going back and 20 guys. Yeah, after that session, the Tuesday, I was doing my body of work on sex, sexuality, and pleasure. And I don't think I was going to do it now, but because we do this deep healing where you work on your fears, you work on your vows of invisibility, of your vows of your, like your loyalty to your families, like wealth, blueprints, we are never going to make money, oh my God. You dive in there, you do the healing, and you start showing up for your work. Yeah, there's a lot, hey? <laughs> uh, I just feel like, oh, you are like a saleswoman. But thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, as you're saying this, I... And this and and this is not like she didn't ask me to say this right like this is not some selling strategy i'm just <laughs> telling y'all if you're a light worker and you're alone out there even if you're not alone this is a staple food okay it's like your lean diet as a light worker <laughs> yeah, yeah thank you so much for sharing that because um I actually remember two pivotal moments that happened in my journey where I realized this body of work, which is the world of mystery school, that I have to do it. So the first one, I was going, I was, I was obviously journaling with, uh, with a guidance from a teacher. Um, and the question was like, if, 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 if you didn't have any fears and nothing was holding you back, what would you really want to teach? Wow. That other people on you know and and when I wrote that like in this was in 2018 I wrote that I really want to teach people the nature of reality right personal reality and collective reality and this was based as many people who know that I'm obsessed with this set material and your Basha channeled material uh this is some things I learned when I was 19 years old and when I learned the nature of reality, what reality is, how does it work, what is time, and all these things. That's very scientific, right? Quantum and all of that. And my mind just really loves them. I just, I can go all day and just read about it. <laughs> just the other day, I bought a book for 900 plan. I'm like, Joy, you are literally just obsessed because wow. it was thinking about this. Yeah. Um, you can say I that for the people in dollars. How much is 900 kilo? <laughs> oh, it was like 83, 88 or 85 dollars. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> and I was just like, and I didn't even hesitate. I was like, I need to have this Wow. Book. And why did I buy yes. this book? Because it's actually bringing in a perspective I've been missing in my journey with the spirituality, which is the, how does Africa fit in? 
like this battle mm. so far, the passion of Africa and I mean I've also been back wow. why I was born in Africa myself I've always wanted to know that so I encountered this mm. book that talks a lot about the ancient civilizations of, of Africa yum, yum, yum. why the current human species originate from Africa and I'm like that I need to understand but wow. it, all these fit into um, understanding why as Africans wherever you are whether you are in the continent or out in the diaspora why is it that our history has turned out the way that it is for what purpose mm-hmm. the history of our mm-hmm. people still impacts us today and if you are at the point where you still don't think you are affected by your ancestors I don't know I don't know what to say to you, but at this point, you should know that you're affected by people who lived before you. At this point, you should know that your life, the issues that you have, that you think are unique to you, are not unique to you. You can actually go and ask the women in your family and you realize they feel the exact same things and they have similar concerns to us because of your DNA, right? It's the bloodline. So, Mm. yeah, so I really always wanted to teach this history because until we understand history we are not going to history to change it it's, we're going to mm. history to understand the present so we can change the future wow. right? and uh that's really that's why i started uh that's that's the first time the thought came to me and at the time i actually created an entire program in 2018 of the mystery school and even wow. writing it i was like there's so much that i need to teach at the time i was like it could be a mm. nice program now it became a 12 month program because last year i had an encounter with a couple of initiated shamans or initiated sangomas traditional healers i had a i had a sacred circle in johannesburg and so i met a couple of them and one of the things i realized and i um i realized this because of the conversations we're having in the sacred circle I realized that there was something missing with uh, the initiations that a lot of people have. And that something missing is the healing of the self, the healing of you mm-hmm. as a vessel of ancestors. African wow. processes, they do heal your ancestors, right? And even you. Mm-hmm. But I think that it's not as in depth as it needs to be because we have a lot of people who are traditionally initiated but they still sometimes yeah. without knowing uh need the healing practice from the ego right and so mm. and also there's a lot of struggle with being a traditional healer because we still haven't yet integrated that we are mental physical beings and that there are mental physical emotional issues within ourselves as vessels that we need to clear so that we can become the clearest vessel mm. for spirit. Right? So that's when I want oh, to like when need healer. They need healing mm-hmm. themselves. And they need also a container where they can come in and to process their own woundings from that childhood, mm. also the woundings of the ancestors. And I think that maybe it could be our generation thing, but our as a, as a generation, we're very mental and intellectual, right? And this mm. is why shadow work and inner work is a huge aspect of what in the school because we need to heal mm. what the beliefs and the stories we hold at the mental at our mental level, right? Yeah. So, oh, uh, I love this. Yeah. So maybe you can speak to the inner work that we are doing in Water Mystery School and how that has been um mm. how that has been speaking to you and your work and for everyone watching wow. please feel free to comment and ask any questions anything you need clarification on we're here to to share and ask mm. yes okay Warrior. you know i am so grateful that i get to journey with you in this lifetime I could, yeah, I could listen to your teaching all day. <laughs> I really enjoy you. Joy. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so regarding the inner work, just before we went live on both Zoom and Facebook, so I was telling you how I haven't been feeling good, right? 
and this has been the case for I think the past week or so and as a person who does body wisdom work I know I'm not supposed to be feeling this way right now my body should be fine yeah and so when I reflected on it I realized that I haven't been doing my meditations yeah and so just two Three hours before this conversation, I just sat down and I did a meditation. I just cleared all my chakras, yeah? Um, so I think the people who are here might be familiar with chakras, right? And that, that's something I got from the mystery school. Even just because I was taking my bath and I was like, no, man, the last time I felt this way, I had skipped doing my meditations for, I think it was like for four days, right? And so I, the feeling was very familiar. And fortunately, I'm part of this thing and I have all these awesome meditations. And I, I sat down for like about 30 minutes and I did like a, a very beautiful clearing of all my chakras. Um, I cried, tears were coming out, I was yawning, all sorts of things. And after that, I felt so much better, you know? And so... Um, the other thing that I thought about was the conversation we've had with you, Joy, around spiritual hygiene. OMG. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't even know I didn't even know that was a thing until I stepped into the mystery school. So yeah, I think the minute you step in, they'll have access to a module, right? Of spiritual hygiene, right? And we d- like who knew that was a thing but it's actually a thing because as as light workers as empaths like we're very sensitive to other people's energies right and you know like it's only now that i'm getting to understand why i used to feel so down and so low energetically and in terms of my mood when i was younger you know i would feel down i'll feel drained and it's because of this thing of being an empath right like just being very sensitive to other people's energies and picking up other people's energies and not having any tools with which to clear this energy, right? Uh, I feel like there's a, there's a lot to say about it, but like the most important thing or one of the important things has been like just this work around taking care of your energetic body as a light worker, you know? and ensuring that like you're not carrying with you around other people's energies and so like also doing the inner work that will enable you to show up for your work because because i've been feeling so down and so heavy i wasn't able to do my work and it is the inner work i've seen like these meditations that i'm talking about and so much more that make it easier for you to show up for your life work Mm. yeah yeah and a lot really (laughs) yeah and i think that when we talk about light work i mean people so like um you might be like we're talking about initiated shamans uh some governments we're not talking about just initiated shamans we're also talking about you as a coach as a teacher as a guide as an artist as a person who spends time working with other people if you do, you are likely the type of person to pick up energies from other people and carry it with you and then literally it can alter your mood and you just don't mm. know what's happening mm. and think it's someone else's. So just today, mm. I, as I, was, I mentioned, I had a session with a client who came. Uh, so it was a physical client who came to my healing space. And uh, I forgot to disconnect from her energy frequency. When I do healing uh, as a vessel, you do connect with someone's energy field. And this is, whether you are aware of it or not, you are doing that. That is how you're able to channel in higher wisdom and higher guidance. So I forgot Mm. this and I found myself deeply depleted. And also feeling the emotions she told me she felt, which was anxiety. And I'm like, Mm. why do I have anxiety? Right, because as mm. as people who hold energies for other people, as because we do that to transmute it with our own energy and our own grit, it was because I didn't disconnect and I did this process of disconnecting 
right, which is a process I mm-hmm. I do and I teach in the ministry school, which is a process I was taught by my martyrdom missionary leader. And these are things that sometimes we take for granted. I feel so good now. After that, I was like, oh, yeah. much better now. Do uh, that's me. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't like this in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the ministry school, even though we're talking about these big things and multi-dimensional things, the impact of the teachings will actually be visible to you on it on your daily life. One other thing that the client said to me, because it was the first time she, she came for a healing, she was like, Oh my god, Joe, I've never felt this. She's like, on a typical day, I'm thinking about the thought. But now I am at bliss. I'm, I'm at, at, wow. at state. Yeah. It's so beautiful. So, um, mm. all this to say, I think that we need to know that we don't have to be moving between this extreme state of mood mm. and mm. that each time when that's happening, it's actually information you're receiving from your soul. And that there are tools available, technologies available for you to navigate yourself through that, you know, because so many people have convinced themselves that trauma, that emotions is who they are. It's it's not who you are, you know? So, Mm. and a lot of light workers, uh, there's always this feeling that, oh, I'm strange, I'm weird, I'm crazy, Mm -hmm. I'm okay, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And... So, so one of the things that I'd say we treated it in our 18 months of working together is the depression that I had. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I know this is the story for a lot of light workers that at some point or another, we, we fall into a depression. Yeah. Or that at one point or another, you're feeling like very low, like life could just end, even when you're not in your premenstrual as a woman. Um, there is something we can do about that, guys. I know for me, the depression was coming from misalignment. I was living my life according to other people's expectations of how I should live my life, right? Um, and I guess also from not understand, fully understanding who I am, what I am, and having no answers to some of the questions that I didn't even know I had, right? So all this to say that there is a remedy, there's something that we can do about where you're at. Do you see how glowing I am today, guys? Like, I'm, I'm a happy woman. Like, yo, like to say I'm living life on my terms, like I don't live in, like that phrase has taken in a whole new meaning for me. Like, just to say, I'm creating my life on my terms. Like, I mean it multidimensionally. Like, not just, not just here on earth. And that is something that is available for you, too. You have available for you the possibility to live your life the way that you want to live it. Like, to do the things that make your heart sing. And to also make money doing those things. Like, you don't have to do it like part time. You can dive in there and do it full time and actually have people pay you. Like you probably saw earlier I asked Joy to convert coolers to dollars. Like that's because that's the frequency I'm on. Like I started an international business without even knowing that that's what I was doing. And I couldn't charge in Kula because some of my clients are not in Botswana, you know? So yeah, like if you're also a coach and like you're also struggling with like your work and you want to like work on your health, wealth mindset and stuff, like there's so much more in the mystery school, guys. Like, yeah, you will be charging in dollars before you know it and being paid for the work that matters to you. Yeah. And whose impact you see in the world. Like, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Uh, if you're watching and you have a question for me or for me or any comments on what we've been saying, please share in the comment section. I will be checking my phone to, to read in a bit. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I absolutely agree with you on 
um, the mystery school is just offering you all the things. What I've also noticed just from conversations with, with the current students is, you know, we can literally have a class about the soul, right? Which is my favorite topic. I actually believe that I am. <laughs> imagine. <laughs> my like, imagine is the soul. The juiciness of having a class on the soul. Like you go to class and you're going to talk about the soul. <laughs> like, guys, <laughs> like that is their life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, I, you're going to love today's class. Uh, because it is dedicated mm. to the soul. Uh, so yeah, to, in, in, in two hours, we are going to have the class uh, every 6 p.m. every Sunday. Uh, so yeah, mm. what, was, what was I think About the soul, I don't remember now. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I know, I should never interject actually when you're speaking. <laughs> Oh, you should see me with my mother because my mother will ask me questions. And then when I'm just about to answer her, and I, I know now it's no longer me, it's my I am presence, my higher mm. self and my mm. guide. She starts saying, you know, my friend Linda, and I'm just like, oh my God, no, I am in. I'm gonna forget. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, okay, I remember what I wanted to say. What I wanted to say is that you know, you might come into the mystery school with an with an idea of what you would like to to accomplish. You know, what are your intentions? Which is something we do in the beginning to set intention collectively as a group and also as an individual. And as we go along, that those intentions they shift so rapidly that you know they do. we don't even remember who mm. we were when we started. And also just how we can have a class on the soul, for example, and we can be talking about these multidimensional things, the scientific things. They're not really scientific, actually. They're very spiritual. These are esoteric trainings that um, mm. in ancient times were taught to, to students who were in the shamanic path, you know. And there is a mm. reason why mystery schools are coming up. I'm not the only person who created a mystery school. There are so many people who are creating mystery schools. And at the core of mystery school, there's a mystery school for specifically initiating you uh, with your own ancestors. And this is usually where you have to actually be in the house with your mentor and you can go through that because it's a very visceral experience. And then there is mystery schools, which is essentially for the esoteric teachings. So you understand these things and learn to integrate them yourself with your higher self and with your guides, you know, uh, which is what the mystery school is. It's not an, an initiation because that's a different ball game altogether. But it is something that has the ability to expand you so exponentially uh, that mm. when you do go for traditional initiation, if that's your path, your journey would be, you would understand what is happening and that will make your journey much mm. easier and much better. Um, and I am literally the queen of ease, and I'm not apologetic about it. I do not think that things are too complicated. Mm -hmm. But I also know it can be painful because we do hold a lot of pain in our bodies, and that doesn't mean it's not, it's still not in the state of ease. It's still ease but, and grace, mm -hmm. even though it's yeah. what Round in this, mm -hmm. I to say that as, you, as we do these big concept things, sometimes you will see something in your life that you were not even focusing in changing mm. relationship with your sister can suddenly transform and you're like i didn't even do any healing with this wound. <laughs> what is happening yeah. right mm. uh so maybe you can also speak to that like the, the changes that you see that are not really directly coming from the sessions that you are having but have been opened up by these teachings yeah and i'll check the mm. comments yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so this dress that I'm wearing, uh, I always want to say it was bought by my mother, but I, I wasn't going to get the dress but because my mom and my sister were like, oh my God, it's, it looks so good on you. Then, then I took it, right? So um, the, like the mystery school has, has made easier 
this path of me being a healer. So much, so much easier, so much to, to contend with, so much to swallow, so much easier to accept. And I'm mentioning my mom and my sister because it's like the work is working on me. And I'm seeing how those relationships are transforming as well. I've just been seeing how differently now I show up for, for these relationships. It's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that was like the, the closest one because we had mentioned a relationship, somebody's relationship with their sister. Um, and, you know, like also the, like this path, I, I know that part of the assignment for me is like to the mathematical term for it is like I want to say integrate, like to integrate, to bring together, you know, like it begins to flow. I know it will begin to flow when when like I've healed relationships with sister relationships with mom relationships with family, right? You've like you've used the term for it, like almost like coming home to self, like just making, make, coming back to whole, to wholeness, right? And so even though that hasn't been like an explicit agenda, I've been seeing myself arriving at that, you know, being able to be more and more of myself with my family, you know, even though I might not use some of the words that I use here and some of the words that I use in social media. And I remember like when I got my first episode of depression in 20. 14, 2015, like one of the things that deeply bothered me was that I felt I couldn't be all of myself with my family. Like I felt like greatly misunderstood, like I had to be something other than myself with my family, you know? And even though it I haven't fully arrived now, um, I, I see that I see that transforming. Like just this morning. Like when I realized that I was feeling awful because I hadn't been doing my meditation, I told my mom, I was like, mom, I actually feel awful. And this is why I've been feeling awful. And right now I need to go do my meditation. And she's like, so what is, what is meditation? So then I had to break it down for her what energy is. Like I had to explain it in Savannah, you know, like telling her, you know, like, yeah, Baholo when Baholo say this is happening, that energy. And I've been carrying other people's energies. And the beautiful thing about it is I know when I do that, when I allow myself to be more of myself and my family, like I'll bring them on the journey as well. You know, like that will bring about transformation for them as well. Right. And yeah, that's been a huge one for me because I, I don't know. I, I don't think I could have ever imagined that I'd be able to talk about some of these things with my family, you know? Like it's always, I've always held onto the, to the idea that they won't get it. And I'm gradually get, getting to allow myself to find the words. Like, sure, like I won't use the words that I use with joy, right? But when, like I can easily find a word or maybe just with better ease, <laughs> find a word to explain some of these things to my mom. Um, yeah, and my sister. So, like, it's such a beautiful journey of coming home to oneself. And I know for me, like, one of the things that I desire for, for me, for my life, is to be myself, to be all of myself everywhere and anywhere with anyone, you know? And doing this work is enabling me to do that, especially with the people like very close to me like family um and that means a lot to me to be able to tell my mom that girl see when i'm see i'm, I'm like i'm going to my room morning and evening it's because i'm going to do my meditation and she's like what is that and i broke it down for her okay mm -hmm. and i know i wouldn't have been able to do that like had i not done the inner work yeah yeah it's so amazing yeah, yeah. Uh, the other week I was explaining to my mom about simultaneous life and the Akashic Records. And yes, yeah. <laughs> um, 
I have the ability to speak of this in very high words, like you are in a PhD class, you know, and then I also mm. can speak and explain this in Susanna if I have to. Mm. Mm. I've always felt this. This is my mind. Yeah, mm. I know this. Wow. I know what you're saying. And you know, so this is wow. what I really tell you that, and other worries that. Pretty much anyone can understand this part. But first, you must mm. understand it yourself. Yeah. And one of the things that yeah. has been taken away from us in Africa is when we were, uh, it was programmed within us to fear the spirit world and the spirit mm. world and understanding it. Um, yet it's weird because we are existing in a spiritual matrix. So, uh, mm. so we're made to fear it. And so we have never even had to attempt to put language to it. Right. So part of the mystery school is to put language to things we know, we feel, not just as light workers, but as every human being. You know, as human beings yeah. feel the things we talk about in the mystery school. And once you put language to something, the power that it used to hold just dissolves. You know, because now you are in control. You know yeah. what the down oh. is about. Right? So I mm. I absolutely oh. love the process of putting language to something and uh, us as Africans coming to the realization that our history has been erased and we must retrieve it and we retrieve it mm. not in like we have to go write books about it we can do that but we have to do it at an individual level like on a daily yeah. basis like you oh. have to like refuse to be erased as a person, you know? And that's what mm. I mean this work is about what she said, which is to come home to the self, to return to the yeah. divine spirit within you, the divine essence that is you. And to to yeah. not just return but be there, be that, live as that every single day. Like you are deserving yeah. of that. You know? So oh. um, I love all the things you're saying. And thank you yeah. so much. Let me just check in if there are any other questions. Do you have any? So it's just a lot of affirmations from other warriors. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Kosha is just sharing how this journey is definitely about self-discovery and your gift and mm. how you actually start paying attention to yourself which is my greatest joy to help women with paying attention to all of who they are, you know? And yeah. Lady Waria Khaledetan is saying, uh, she likes what you're saying, when one feels like there's something missing in their life, despite what they're doing, you know? Uh, that is like super important, like you highlighted that when she commented it. Um, and yeah. There is a lot of people who feel this way. And if you are one of those people, uh, check out the mystery school for maybe it might be that thing that is missing within you. Once mm. again, we come into these conversations um, just so to show you um, what is possible. And we also invite you to go deep within yourself and see if that resonates either way. Like that's important. You get to decide, you know? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. any last words, Warrior? Thank you so much. <laughs> is there anything you would like? Yeah, this has been so good. <laughs> um, there was something that you just um said about our African history, African existence, right? Which got me thinking about like the 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 decolonial project, right? And I was thinking that doing this work has given that decolonization, whatnot, a whole new meaning. Um, and like, we don't have to break anything. <laughs> we can just build it. We just build. You wake up and you build. Um, and you've mentioned this quite quite a number of times that there exists light and the shadow, right? And that 
like to like to diffuse the darkness or the shadow we don't have to break down the shadow we just bring in more light and that was so liberating for me it just means that every morning i wake up and i do the light work every morning i wake up and i focus on the light and i don't have to fight i don't have to break anything i don't have to dismantle anything i just bring in the light that has been like so liberating for me and and very very empowering um because like in my journey as a leader who's been an activist you know i i struggle with like having to fight and having to dismantle and i just wanted to create a new ecosystem and like i'm happy to be in a space that gives me the tools and the language to create a new ecosystem because i know that even if i were to dismantle the foundations of that which i might be wanting to dismantle are not are not conducive for the world that i want to create you know so yeah i like i said guys just to reiterate as a light worker you want to be in the mystery school such that every week you're just getting awesome content that is going to expand you and that you're also in a community that allows you to just be who you are that when you've had like your weird dream you can text them and say guys this is what i dreamt or the grandmother's came whatever <laughs> ah yeah i'm so grateful for it uh i love that um a couple of years ago uh when i was doing a lot of work with african dialogue which is my uh interview my group that i started in 2016 i did a project uh which was about sex sexuality and gender you should actually check out that history that that book to me because that book educated me so much on that that project i had to do it with like uh 11 writers creatives who were looking at gender and sexuality and mm. it, it's still to this day one of my favorite projects ever because it taught me a lot about gender and sex and sexuality and wow. i want it yeah mm. so one of the the big literary editors in africa wrote about it and he said when he was describing it, he said i'm an interviewer and a human rights activist and i was so shook by this title human <laughs> rights activist yeah i don't think the mm. idea of a human rights activist i didn't think of myself as a human rights activist and i think it was a word mm. that i've been literally in meditation with a title because i was like am i that's so interesting he thinks mm. i am doing human rights work and now i can mm. say i am a human rights activist in my healing i am literally doing decolonization yeah. work my my work mm. is about human rights about ensuring that mm. all of us um receive all that we need to actually thrive in the world right and mm. that includes accessing knowledge <laughs> right accessing mm. knowledge that is going to be supportive of you in your healing of all the belief systems and stories that you currently hold that you might believe are truth no actually mm. that you might believe are facts when they are just the truth as in they are truth to someone they don't need to be truth to you you know mm. they're not facts though they're not the only you know factors that something we can prove and we're so certain of and so many of us we walk in the world so sure that this is the fact this is the fact no that is one of the <laughs> truth you believe in that the world is in it. <laughs> you know wow. that, it's important that you know yeah. that that is not the only truth that exists you know so if you're looking for yeah knowing your truth of who you think you are so that you may finally step into uh the version of yourself who you will consciously be aware you are deciding on then the new school is for you we are starting in five days 
uh, on the 20th of August. So uh, check out the website, sign in, um, apply, and I will definitely have a conversation with you so that you understand the insights on it and anything, any questions that you might have, you can ask me in the discovery call. Right? So thank you so much. Thank you so much to me, also. This has been so juicy. It was amazing. <laughs> It's and like we're just hanging out on a Sunday afternoon. It was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> and I know we could do mm. ever so, but we must end. Yes, we could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, and for people who um, would like to, to literally be part of your work, because every woman should be part of the work you're doing, where can they you know, connect with you? Mm. Uh, yeah, so you guys can find me on on Facebook. My Facebook page is Simelo Moreri Coaching. Um, and yeah, my own personal page is Simelo Moreri. Um, and there, like I've shared details about, about the work. When you go to my page, Simelo Moreru Coaching, you'll also find um, a free Facebook community that I've created for women who want to do this work on sex, sexuality, and pleasure. So you can join us there. I, I do regular challenges and masterclasses as well. Um, and you can also check out my website, simelomoreru.com. Um, there's more information there about this like my free offers and my coaching offers as well. Um, yeah, and it would be awesome to connect with you and see how we can work together. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. If you definitely are looking to be jarred and shocked in a very good and super important <laughs> way, you have to be part of, what is your Facebook group called? Uh, uh, it's called Re reclaiming your erotic sexuality yes it's oh so juicy it's, and i feel like it, <laughs> juicy is not even the word is orgasmic so <gasps> oh. mm. <laughs> so definitely and, check it out yeah and you know like i find it interesting that you describe it as orgasmic because this is something that I set an intention about in our work together. Some months ago, I decided I want people to say my work feels orgasmic. Oh, and is. here we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I also. Oh, I'm so I glad. Think, Thank you. Yeah. All my life, I wanted people to say this is like magic. Like, I feel like I just. Mm. And that is what Warrior Mystery School work is. It's magic work. It's oh, yeah, all the things. Yeah. So thank it's you so much. It's <laughs> enchanting. Oh, that's the word. <laughs> oh, I was missing the, the word. Okay. So the word is Warrior Mystery School is enchanting. You will definitely, you know, how you feel when you're watching a fantasy movie and you are yes. in your laptop or your phone and you have your popcorn in your bed and you just are mm. so excited life off you're like i can't mm. wait to dig into this movie and there's this epic thing in the middle of the movie that just blows <laughs> your mind and you're like oh my god i'm so, so alive i'm so yeah. happy i get to witness this kind of things created by human beings yeah, you will experience mm -hmm. it in the world. That's the mystery school. Yeah. <laughs> you always like, I feel like okay. I'm in a lot of the room sometimes. <laughs> of course. Like those elves. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Thank you so it. much, Joy. This has been loads of fun. <laughs> mm. Thank you so much for, yes, for coming to share with everyone. And everyone who joined us today, thank you for joining us. And please follow to me for all the orgasmic things that you need and deserve in your life. And check out your mm. in the website to read more about it. And if you are thinking about it, apply, just apply. It doesn't mean you're making a contact with me. 
and we can talk more mm. in depth about it in the discovery session. Okay, so have a great day, everyone. I will see you on Tuesday. Okay. We'll to update on what is next in the next 10 days. Okay, love and bless. Mm. Okay, <laughs> bye, everyone. <laughs> mm.